David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, today I have something fun. Uh, it's a brand new pen from Aurora that will be launching very soon. Uh, possibly even today if you're watching this the day that I upload it. Uh, it's the latest in their Minerali line of their 88 model called the Diopside. Uh, this pen was loaned to me for review by the good folks at Kenro Industries, who are the U.S. distributor of Aurora as well as Montegrappa. Uh, Kerry with Kenro asked if I want to be one of the first to review this diopside version of the uh, Aurora 88, and how could I turn that down? Uh, while I'm sure that they would like me to say nothing but positive things about their pen, the opinions expressed in this review are my very own and were not influenced in any way by the loan of this new pen. So what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and the features of the new Diopside uh, version of the Aurora 88, uh, talk about its features and uh, the, what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, Aurora is an Italian company which was founded in 1919 in Turin, Italy, which is no located in the northern uh, part of Italy, not far from France. Uh, it's a city which back in 2006 hosted the Winter Olympics. Uh, during World War II, Aurora's original building was destroyed so that they moved their uh, manufacturing just outside of Turin, which is now where they continue to manufacture today. Um, not long after they moved into their new facilities, around 1947, they began producing what would become their most popular model, the Aurora 88. Um, it was a pen designed to compete with the Parker 51. Uh, and those early versions looked very similar to those Parker pens, having a, a hooded nib and a metal cap uh, and a resin body. Uh, the 88 went through a few variations, but it was produced into the 1970s. Uh, and in 1990, a new version of the 88 was produced, which is very close in design to what we have here today. Uh, the Minerali line of the Aurora 88 is comprised of five pens inspired by colored minerals. Uh, the first pen in the series to be released was the blue Azurite model. Uh, then there's the green model, the Diopside, which is the one I'll be discussing today. Uh, there are additional models that will have staggered future releases. There is the orange amber, the red cinnabar, and the purple amethyst. Uh, I think each of the pens in this line look really sharp. Uh, you know, that I think this promotional picture shows off the pens really well. Uh, except for there's one small detail that bugs me. Uh, the pistons are extended to different lengths. Uh, you gotta have all of those in a line. I know it has nothing to do with the actual pen itself, but stuff like that gets to me. Okay, let's actually take a look at a pen. The pen arrives in this large box. Uh, on the sleeve, it says 88 Minerali. Uh, the 88 is in a dark gray, so I'm not quite sure how that shows up, but it's there. Uh, and then there's a picture of the pen jutting out of a crystal. Uh, you know, I wish pens actually formed like that. Then we would have like fountain pen mines where people would pay money to see what pens they could chisel away from the rocks. You know, there's one dude that works all day and is bummed because all he's found was a preppy. And then another guy comes in and finds a Danny Trio after looking for like 10 minutes. Uh, Last summer, we were on a road trip vacation and actually stopped at the Herkimer Diamond Mines in central New York, where you go out into these big rock fields and uh, bang rocks with a hammer until you find these little microscopic little diamonds, which actually, from what I understand, are actually quartz crystals. It's a little sad. Earlier this week, uh, they actually had a big fire at the Herkimer Mines that burnt down the large museum in the Welcome Center. But from what I read, uh, even though their main building was burnt to the ground, they didn't even close for the day. Uh, it was an interesting place to visit. If you're ever in central New York, uh, I would recommend it. For me, it, was like, it wasn't like all day interesting. It was more like two or three hours interesting, but interesting nonetheless. Uh, the outer sleeve slips off. And then inside, uh, there's the outer box. There is the Aurora logo, which I always felt kind of looked more like a logo for an Italian car manufacturer. Now, there's nothing wrong with it. It just looks a lot uh, very similar to the logo for Fiat. Uh, and then on the side of the box, there's a little info about the pen uh, that shows that this is a fine nib as well as the limited edition number. Uh, this lid lifts off 
And then inside we have the actual box. The front of the outer box flips open, which is nice. It makes it really easy to get the large box out of here. Uh, and the box is made from a nice quality plastic. Uh, and on the top again is the Aurora logo. The top flips open and inside we have the pen. Uh, let me go ahead and set that aside just for a second. Uh, the inside of the box has uh, like a padded faux leather uh, on the inside, which uh, in the inside is the Aurora logo. And then in both Italian and English, it says uh, since 1919, made in Italy. Uh, on the tray, there's actually a little metal plaque that says 18 karat uh, solid gold nib in both uh, English and Italian. The tray actually lifts off. And underneath, there is a rather spacious compartment. Uh, inside, we have a bottle of what appears to be uh, Aurora Black ink. Uh, and then there was a uh, use and care guide. Uh, and then there was a little uh, plastic Aurora logo that was attached to the clip of the pen. Okay, we'll set that aside for a second. And here is the pen. This is the Aurora 88 Minerali Diopside. Uh, it is a clear demonstrator made from a high quality transparent resin. Um, you know, it, it feels like it's made from high quality materials. Uh, the key feature of this pen are the color pieces on each end as well as an accent piece here in the middle. So let's start by taking a look at this finial. Um, in keeping up, uh, with the theme of this pen, uh, it is green. Uh, this version of the Minerali, as, uh, like others, are a limited edition. This specific pen is number 71 of 388. Now, this is minor, but uh, you know, I find the inconsistent character kerning just a little bit odd. Uh, okay, a quick kerning lesson. Uh, kerning deals with the spaces between letters. Uh, in this example here, the set of letters on the left do not have any kerning. You can imagine if you drew a box around each letter, it, it wouldn't touch the other letter. Uh, and then on the right is an example of some extreme kerning. You can see how the letters overlap each other's space. Um, here's the finial again, and keeping in mind, uh, you can see how between the 0 and 7, there's no kerning, a little between 7 and 1, and then a lot between the 1 and forward slash and 3, but then there's none between the 3 and the 8 and the 8. Uh, you know, while I typically like a bit of kerning, that's just a personal preference. Uh, the thing uh, I want, however, is consistency. If you're going to do it one way, pick one way and stick with it. Okay, kerning rant finished. Um, I do like the placement of the numbers on this pen though, and, and I think that having them on the finial like this looks nice. Um, I believe the engraved numbers are actually filled with a metallic-like paint that really helps the numbers pop a bit against the green, so that's nice. Next, we have a chrome-plated band and a clip, which are all one piece. Uh, now, I've always liked it when the band and clip are all one piece. I, I just like that look. Um, the clip has a nice rounded flow to it, uh, and on the end is a large ball. Now, there's a number of pilot pens that have a large ball at the end of the clip, and, and that's something that I just personally really hasn't, haven't cared for that much. Uh, but the one here on the Minerali is a bit more oval and not as much of a hard circle. Uh, and while, so I'll, I'm not a huge fan of the pilot clips, I think the one on this one looks nice. Uh, the cap actually angles up, uh, and then we have the cap band. And on it, it says Aurora. Uh, then there's a small step down where there is a green band. Uh, then we have the barrel, uh, which tapers down at a consistent angle until you reach the end of the barrel, where we have a rounded chrome-plated band and then the elongated piston knob, which is, again, the same green material uh, as used on the other accent parts of the pen. Uh, you know, I like the looks of this material. It has a nice depth to it, uh, and in the light, uh, there's a, a bit of a uh, uh, fair amount of pearlescence to it as well. So uh, it's some nice material. The cap twists off to reveal this very nice 18 karat gold nib. Uh, I really like the scroll work on this nib. I, I think it looks unique. Uh, it's stamped with a large 18K in the middle, and then it's branded Aurora at the bottom. Uh, there's no markings that I could see on the nib, but the box indicated that this is a fine. Uh, and then here's a look at the ebonite feed. The end of the section is flared, 
Uh, and then the section angles up until we get to the cap threads, which aren't sharp at all. Uh, then we have a rather generous ink window. Now, it does sound a little bit funny to say that there's a, a clear demonstrator that has an ink window. I mean, the entire thing is an ink window. But you have to keep in mind that not all versions of the 88 are clear like that. So on those versions, the cap and the barrel are a more solid color as well as the section, uh, and the ink window serves more of a purpose. Uh, this is a piston filler, and there's quite a few things to talk about in regard to this piston. Um, first of all, the chamber is actually a separate piece rather than just being on the inside of a hollowed out pen, which is an interesting design. Uh, the next thing about the piston I found interesting is that there is a little hole uh, in the middle of the piston, uh, when, and when you extend it all the way down into the section, uh, you can actually see here that the feeder tube actually goes into the piston. Uh, I haven't seen that design before in any other pen, so I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, the last thing about this piston uh, is that Aurora has a unique design that captures a little bit of ink around the sides of the piston. So it's a little hard to see here. Maybe I'll have to show during the writing sample, but the darker green that you could see up here at the top, that is the actual piston and that it's ink that's captured right around the side of it. The reasoning for this uh, is that when you run out of ink, it's a few extra drops of ink that can get you a few more sentences when you're in a pinch. Uh, like I said, during the writing sample, I'll show it a little bit more up close. While I'm not sure how useful having a couple extra drops of ink are, it, the feature does work exactly like they say it does. Uh, a little bit of ink stays up there. Uh, the piston mechanism itself is very smooth and feels very solid. With some piston fillers on expensive pens, uh, it's tough to get a full fill. With uh, this Minerali, I was able to get a virtually a full fill with a single extension and retraction of the piston, which was really nice to see. Uh, this pen is very comfortable in the hand. Uh, it, it is not uh, super heavy, but it's not necessarily inordinately, inordinately, inordinately light. Uh, the section is not slippery at all, and the barrel is plenty enough long enough to, for me to use uh, unposted. Uh, and if, but if you like to post your pens, the cap does post deeply and securely, uh, and that it's light enough that it doesn't throw off the balance at all, uh, or make it too uh, long. Uh, and I actually kind of like the look of seeing the green of the barrel uh, peeking through the transparent cap. That's just kind of an interesting look to it. Uh, now, I don't know whether this is just by luck or design, but when capping the pen, uh, that um, on a pen with a transparent cap like this, I, the orientation of the nib is important to me. I don't like seeing it kind of skewed. Uh, in the case of the Minerali, there's two cap threads, and when one is used, you can see here the, the nib is facing up in alignment with the clip. And when the other thread is used, it is uh, facing exactly away from the clip. Uh, again, I don't know if that's by design uh, or if your pen may vary, but uh, that's a plus in my book. I like that. The Aurora 88 Minerali retails for a little over $700. Uh, now, I'll, I'll admit that I, when I first saw the previous Azurite version, um, it wasn't something that appealed to me at that price. Uh, I will say, though, that as I've used this pen for the last couple of weeks, uh, it has really grown on me. Uh, there's a lot that I like about it. Um, it is on the high end of what I feel the value of the pen brings to the table, but I, after using this for a couple of weeks, don't feel that the $700 range is unreasonable. Um, I, you know, I do wish it was slightly larger, but it is a very solid and very well manufactured pen. And as you'll see in the writing sample, the nib performs outstanding. I really enjoy this nib on this pen. While it is a fine, I find it to be very generous fine uh, that is more like a Western medium. Uh, and the 18K nib provides a very smooth and very soft writing experience. The more I've used it, the more it makes me have to uh, regret sending this back to Kenro. So, uh, thanks again to Kenro for the loan of this pen. Uh, the Diopside should be launching very soon. Uh, if it's not already available at your favorite retailer that carries Aurora pens, it should be very shortly. So, now it's time for some measurements, some size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go.
go with some size comparisons for the Aurora 88 Minerali Diopside. Uh, just before we get started, I'm, you can see here maybe a little bit better in the light uh, the ink that forms around the uh, around the piston. So there is a you know a plastic piston underneath there, and uh, you can see here that the ink actually kind of wraps around it. So like I mentioned, it does exactly what they the, what they say it uh, it should do there, and I think that's kind of a cool feature. Uh, here it is with an Aurora Optima. Then here it is with a Sailor 1911 Large. Uh, and then here it is with a Pelican M1000. Then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a uh, Lamy, Lamy Safari. Uh, here it is with a Platinum 3776 Yamanaka. Uh, and then here it is with a Franklin Christoph number no. 2. So here we go with the writing sample for the Aurora. We'll call it the 88 Minerali That's actually that's an I, not an E, Minerali. And this is the diopside. This is a medium 18 karat gold nib. Uh, and the ink that I'm using today is Diamine Apple Glory. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is one of my favorite greens. I just think it is a, a nice, healthy green that has a bit of pop to it. Uh, that uh, is nicer, than, or at least a little bit lighter than some of the darker kind of uh, forest or hunter greens. Uh, here it is in comparison with some Seiss Krushnak uh, Lime Green. Uh, or even here it is with a uh, Karandash uh, Delicate Green, which is a little bit too light for me. I, I find that it actually shows up a little darker on the on uh, the sample than it does on the page. It's just a little bit too light for me. Uh, the, this is the, the bottle that Diamine Inks come in. Uh, it's a really great bottle. The top's pretty uh, plenty wide enough uh, and that uh, it's deep enough so that you can get just about any nib in here. So uh, I enjoy their bottles. Okay, so here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, I mentioned it before that the outside of the box says that this is a fine and um, that uh, there's no markings on the nib, but I mean, if I had to guess, I would have said that this was a, uh, a medium because it does lay down a rather nice medium line. Uh, and you can get a bit of line variation out here if you press it a little bit. Uh, it is, I'd say, a very wet nib as well. The ink flow on this is uh, very, very nice. I'm sure that has a lot to do with the uh, ebonite feed. In regard to reverse writing, It's a little bit scratchy, but it gets the job done. Uh, and then in regard to some fast writing, it performs just fine. Uh, that, so there we have the Aurora 88 uh, Minerali Diopside. Uh, I, I will say that before I had a chance to spend time with this pen, it wasn't a pen that I really considered for my own collection, but the more I spend time with this, the more I really enjoy this pen. Uh, and that uh, it, it's definitely got on my interest uh, in my uh, potential purchase list, just because um, the nib is very, very good, very, very pleasant. Uh, and I really enjoy the, the look and the feel and the quality of this pen. So thanks again. Go out to uh, Kenro Industries for the loan of this pen. Uh, and you should check out your favorite pen retail that carries Aurora uh, pens for, uh, for this pen that should be launching here very shortly. So thank you again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.